Okay, here's our next uh, next uh, job here. We've got a little air castle radio. Picked it up for forty dollars at an auction. Um, it doesn't work. It's been worked on by somebody, but um, whatever it does, it, it doesn't work. So we're going to have to fix it. Let's see what's going to be wrong with it. First, we'll go ahead and um, we'll shoot the juice to it and see what's wrong with it. I <laughs> see one thing. Good grief! Oh God, it's got the original cord on. Hey, it's pretty pretty solid. But right there, it's, oh boy. The cord is really pretty solid, but, I, but you know, if you're going to sell a radio publicly, uh, you can't leave a dangerous cord on it. You have to, you have to replace it. All right, let's go ahead and we'll plug it in and see what happens. Let's see, I'm going to turn that switch off. what this is. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Okay. This has got something to do with the band, I guess. I don't know. It's only got two bands on it, but this sound feels like a switch that's got a lot of detents in it. Well, we'll find out. Okay, first thing we're going to do, we're going to plug it in and see what happens. Okay. Now, whenever we plug this in, we plug it in to the electronic fuse. And we're going to set the uh, about eight cycles, and we're going to set it for about three amps. And that way, when we turn it on, if it's pulling a lot of current, it'll pop the fuse and save the radio. We always use this electronic fuse. It's got a watt meter in it as well. And when we turn it on, we'll watch the wattage and see how many watts it's pulling. And if it's more than about 30 or 40 watts, we know something is um, bogus. Okay. Okay, that looks good. It's pulling about 33 watts, which is completely reasonable. Now, as, the, as it warms up, it's going to pull more. 35, 40... 50. Okay, it's pulling 53 watts. Okay, looking at that transformer, I would say we got some problems. 53 watts is a little high for that size of transformer, so we'll have to see what's going on. Okay, we got some noise. Whoop. We got audio. Okay, very good. Okay, and if I touch one of the uh, RFs, Okay, so, okay, so the audio is working. I don't know about any of the other stuff. The RF seems to be, uh, be wrong. We get nothing when we touch the input. We should get a strong scratching noise when we touch the antenna. We get nothing, so we've got uh, RF problems for sure. Okay, let's turn the power off. Interesting. That looks original. That looks in original. It's in good shape. Okay, this will have to be cleaned up and um, made to look good. Yeah, for forty bucks, what can you what can you ask for? The rest of them. Oh, you don't. Now, um, okay. Well, okay. Don't. 
speaker is in good shape. I wonder how in the heck they changed that grill cloth without taking the speaker out. Or else they took the speaker out and put it back in and didn't clean it off. <laughs> Woo. He did a good job on cleaning the chassis up. Okay, so let me get this a little bit twisted up here. The, the, the cord is, you know, if I was keeping the radio in my own collection, I'd leave this cord on there, but it's, it's too dangerous to sell to, a, uh, to a, an uninformed customer. Well, whoever did it was not a professional. They were kind of amateur. There's uh, they didn't put a fuse in it. There, okay. All right, first thing we're going to do, we're going to see how far the radio works. The, the, cord, the line cord is secure enough to where we can use it. You know, we, we don't have to worry about it exploding right now. Um, okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hook the signal generator onto it, and we're going to see if signal gets through the IF. Okay. Whoever did this converted it over from a 2-volt radio to a 6-volt radio. In other words, this is supposed to be a 2A7, it's a 6A7, and apparently the others here are the same. Let me look at some of these and see. 2A5, and this is going to be a 42. Okay, yeah, so it's clearly been, they have changed the, uh, changed it from 2-volt tubes to 6-volt tubes. Okay, that helps greatly in the, uh, in the, uh, finding of the tubes. So, because 2-volt two, two tubes sometimes can be a little more hard to find. The 6-volt tubes are dime a dozen. The 2-volt tubes are, uh, little more rare. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I've got plenty of them, but still. Uh, uh, first thing we got to do, we get the generator. Plug this back in. Uh, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to look at this uh, power tube here and see what kind of bias we have on it. We're pulling too much current out of this transformer. So um, what we want to do is go ahead and we'll see what the bias is on here. I, I have a feeling that that tube is not biased correctly and it's pulling too much plate current. And that would be uh, why we have a, a excessive uh, current. Okay. So this transformer is not the original transformer. They've replaced that. Okay, the six, they put, it, put a 6-volt transformer in there. Okay, let's do some measurements and see what we get. All right. Uh, I'm going to look on 50 volt scale. We should have about 20 volts. Okay. You syrup. We're going to look between the cathode and the first grid and see what the bias is on that uh, power tube. <coughs> Oops, that ain't going to do. That ain't going to do. Now watch out. You've had the power on. That capacitor is full of voltage. Okay. Keep your finger off. Keep your finger off. What's it goes like that? Okay, it's good. Okay. Now, go get it. Okay. Something is, is, is definitely, definitely cooking there. I can hear it. I can actually hear it arcing. 
I can hear the damn thing arcing. I'm going to disconnect the speaker so I can hear it and see if I can determine what it is here that's arcing. Okay, let's let's go. What the hell? <laughs> Something was just arcing. It stopped now. We're at 80 watts. We're pulling 80 watts. Whatever it is that was arcing is now arced good. It's, it's pulling 80 watts. Okay, so um, that is called burnout time for the transformer. So we cannot run that transformer more than a few seconds at a time. Uh, I have a very smelly feeling that the transformer is what was arcing. It's coming from right there. And that's transformers all that's there. Yeah. That's just what we need is an arc transformer. Okay, first I'm going to pull out this rectifier tube. Okay, let's try again. We have no B plus now. Okay, pulling 18 watts without the rectifier. Okay. See, now that's just these tubes here, and that, that's okay. That's okay. So the transformer is good. Okay, if I plug the rectifier in, eighty watts. Eighty watts. Whoo! Okay. Not good. Okay, so we've got a problem with the B plus here. Big, big, big problem with the B plus. Okay, now we've got. I can't see. Boy, those look like brand new condensers there. Brand new condensers. Ah. Okay. Let's see. This is. Okay, we get 18 watts. Okay, so the power, the power that's causing the short is going through the speaker. Okay, you know, field coil and all that stuff. Okay. All right, we're up and running again. All right, let's see if we've got any IF getting through there. I'm going to go ahead and connect the generator. I have no idea what position, if any, this switch. I think the switch has got one of its uh, stops uh, broken off. One of them is still there, but it should only be a two-position switch, and you can turn it 180 degrees. It's too much. So I think the other stop is broken off. So I'll have to figure out where that should be. Okay, we'll need scope. Let's get scope. Connect the generator, one of them to ground, and one of them to the antenna terminal. We When we do that, no matter what you connect to the antenna terminal, you should get a big scratching noise. We get nothing. So we got something wrong here. Okay. Um, all right, we're going again. The scope is going. I'm going to... Okay, that's going to be the input. So this is the, uh, the oscillator section here. I'm going to stick the probe down alongside the oscillator section. You, can, you turn the tuning condenser and nothing happens to the frequency. It changes 100 kilohertz.
I'm just trying different sections of the, uh, the, the band switch. Okay, it's, it's completely screwed. Okay, the short wave frequency doesn't oscillate. Okay, see I'm, I'm watching, I've got the, uh, the probe stuck, just stuck down alongside the tuning condenser and we're watching the scope. <clears throat> okay, when I have it here, this is the short wave position, I'm guessing. Okay, that's the broadcast band position. But notice that I'm turning the uh, tuning condenser. The amplitude changes a little, but the frequency is virtually constant. <laughs> the condenser is having no effect on the frequency. Oh boy. Let's see if we have any hope whatsoever on the rest of the radio being okay. <clears throat> now, what I'm doing now, I'm connecting the uh, generator. Okay, I've got it set to 1 megahertz, and I'm going to connect that to the grid of the 6A7. <laughs> Be darned! <laughs> okay, we, we've got the scope connected to the grid of the 6A7. Now, here's what we see on the scope. Okay, see we've got our signal. Okay, I've got it set to 1 megahertz. So when I tune the tuning condenser, okay, there we are. We're peaking at 1 megahertz, and if I look on the dial, we're reading at about 900. <clears throat> now, the reason it's low is either it's not tuned correctly or the loading of the scope probe has pulled it down a little bit. Okay, I'm not worrying about that right now. The main thing is that we see that from the antenna coil, to the input of the uh, converter, we have the thing properly connected. Okay, if I put the tuning condenser all the way in, okay, I've got it completely meshed, 550, I'm going to tune the, tune the generator. Okay, 523. We're, we're actually getting a signal. Okay, now we're putting <clears throat> a half a volt into the input, so it's ridiculous. But at least we are converting and we're getting a signal through the thing. Okay, at 550 kilohertz, <clears throat> we should get about 900 and something. Oh, right at 1 megahertz roughly for the uh, oscillator. Okay, right now we're seeing... Uh, it's reading 759, so the oscillator is way low. Okay, if I start tuning up. Okay. Now, at 1 megahertz, okay, this is 1 megahertz here on the tuning dial. We should be reading an oscillator of um, 1455, 1 megahertz plus 455. We're reading 832. That's ridiculous. It's nowhere near. And then when we go all the way up to uh, 1700, should be two something megahertz. We're only 800 kilohertz. So, see the um, the tuning condenser is having no effect on the uh, no effect whatsoever on the uh, frequency. Okay. First, I want to check the IF and see if that's working. Okay. To do that, we tune down. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to tune the generator. Okay, we're reading at 520, which is the input frequency, and that varies with the tuning condenser, so that's the conversion frequency. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the frequency to the 456, 465 kilohertz that it should be for the IF. Okay. It's right on. It's it's the the IF is right on. 
second generator at 465, um, we're reading the peak. So whoever aligned the radio did a good job on the um, IF. Okay, so we've got everything working from the output of the converter to the, um, to the speaker. All right, what I want to do, I've got to check the wiring on the oscillator section. Oh, hell. Oh, what is this? What is this? Oh. Oh, this idiot likes to take the damn wires and twist them around and then solder them. So you can't get anything apart without going through a lot of trouble. You don't need to twist the wires around the terminals. You don't need to twist the wires around the terminal. Just solder them on there. Okay, this... Holy crap! <laughs> That's a 005! <laughs> He's got a 005 going from the grid of the oscillator to ground. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my goodness gravy! Oops. Oh, for heaven's sakes! Okay, that is definitely not kosher. It's not there. Pin 5. I had it there. I'm sure I had it there. That's what I read. It's not going. It's not going to any. Okay, so what I found by doodling the, sw the switch has no indexes in it. The index is broken off in the switch. So I found that I have, I've got the two positions. What I did was I fed the uh, generator into the antenna terminal and I'm looking on the first grid of the tube and I'm just tried different switch positions until I found the two positions, one of them for broadcast band and the other for um, uh, short wave. Alright, I've got those marked on the front panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to drill a hole in the shaft and put a, put a screw in it and I'm going to put a couple of stop pins on the chassis. There's enough room between the, uh, the, the I, I, I think I can get it in there. I'm going to go with a number two. I think a number two will do it. We can always drill it larger. Need a little flat. <laughs> Start drill. Okay. Okay. Now, number two. Okay, uh, I've got the indexing in there. See, now we have to where we can only go between the two positions. All right. Okay. Okay, at the highest frequency we get, this is not working. 893. Okay, 787 to 893. <laughs> That's not even remotely correct. Okay. All right. And the other one does not work at all. Okie doke. 
So there's still something screwy with the oscillator. Uh, somebody added a condenser here. This is not original. Let me see what that reads. They added a four hundred and sixty five picofarad capacitor in parallel with the <laughs> tuning capacitor. Can you imagine that? Oh, good grief. Oh, my goodness gravy. Oh, oh, oh. oh my goodness gravy. All right, let's get this back over here. <laughs> 400. Well, I didn't have a smaller one. All I had was this 400 picofarad one. That ought to work. <laughs> oh, my goodness gravy. All right, let's see what we get. Now, all right. That also is why the short wave probably isn't oscillating. We'll fire it up and see what happens. <laughs> oh, my goodness gravy. I've got to know better than to buy a radio that somebody in the club has worked on. All right, the lowest frequency we get. We still don't get any oscillation on the short wave. Okay, the lowest frequency we get is 927. All right, and uh, 465. Okay. That calculates out to um, 462. It, it could be that the scope itself is loading it. Okay, let's see what we go up to. Now. Okay, all the way up. 1.9 megahertz. That's, that's, that's better. Okay, so we're going from 1435 to 462 to 1435. So we're low by a whole bunch. Okay? But at least now the range is a lot better. But why doesn't the short wave one? All right, this is the circuit. We have the broadcast coil and the and the um, the uh, short wave coil and the switch connects one or the other input coils or the uh, resonant coils onto the grid, and the feedback coils, another switch goes to B+. Okay, the BC one, broadcast band, we have connection to B+. But the short wave coil, that feedback coil here, is open. This particular coil goes nowhere. It is not... See, we don't get any short wave in this area. I mean, this radio does not have the sensitivity to pick up short wave. So I'm not going to spend time pulling that coil and fixing the feedback coil and things like that on a short wave. It's, it's just not worth it. What we have to do now is get the uh, tuning range of the oscillator to be correct. Okay, we have to go from 1015 to 2165 on this oscillator. All right, we'll go ahead and fire it up again. Now, this time, instead of connecting the scope onto the grid, which loads the hell out of it, we're just going to take the, the scope probe and we're going to put it close to it, to where it isn't going to... Uh, first, we'll make sure it's going. Okay, it's coming on. Okay. All right, that's the highest it'll go. 
Okay, let's see. See, it's reading right now 1.9, and we need 2.16. All right, let me get on here. I'm just placing it near it so it doesn't load it. 2.09 we're getting. Pretty close. We're within 16 um, kilohertz or whatever it is um, of getting to the right frequency. Very close, in other words. Okay, I, I don't know. All right, now on the bottom end, okay, let me go down. Let's see, trigger. Bottom end, 1.09, and we want 1.01. .01. Surprisingly close. Okay, we want 1015. It, it's close. It's very close. Okay, here's the top. 2.07. We want 2.1. Okay, so it's very close. Very close. All right. Uh, the range of the oscillator now is close enough to be okay. Let's connect the speaker and see if we get any signals. Okay, and I'm going to need an aerial. Okay, got an aerial. Okay, this, we're all hooked up. Everything is okay. Let's turn it on. Okay, so we're, we're going to <clears throat> leave it as is. There, there's nothing on the shortwave bands nowadays, so going to a lot of trouble <clears throat> fixing this uh, shortwave coil. It's got an open feedback winding in the shortwave coil. So uh, rather than take that all apart and unwinding it and winding it back again, we're just going to forget the shortwave and we'll just leave it to be broadcast only. What was wrong with the radio entirely uh, first was the um, the index on the switch that kept us from having the switch in the correct position. And then the second thing, which was even more serious, was this, <laughs> this 465 microfarad capacitor placed across the tuning condenser. You know, that totally swapped it out. I don't know what the guy was thinking. I have no idea. But uh, that, that definitely completely threw the tuning off on the uh, front end. Okay, so <clears throat> we have a little bit of repair to do. When I was manipulating the radio around, I knocked this cardboard uh, IF can. We'll put it back in the cabinet, and we'll be rid of it. I was about to grab that. <laughs> That's funny. Break it off of there again. See, it's under solid now. All right, the first thing we have to do is put the speaker in. Ooh, 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 ooh. I almost forgot. Nope, we can't leave. We can't leave that power cord on there. We can't leave that power cord. 
even though it's a nice original power cord, that is too dangerous. See, we're going to put this in the antique store for general sale to the public, and <clears throat> that would be too dangerous to uh, leave for the public. Another thing I forgot to do, I forgot to put a fuse in there. All right, we got got some stuff we have to do yet. Okay, this one we should have a half amp. This is a small one. That's half an amp is 60 watts, which is what this plugs. I don't know if three quarters is going to be about right. All right, now, okay, let me see if we got some power cord. That's the last of it. That is the last of it. I got to order another roll. I had a 100 foot roll of it, and it is gone. Okay, well, we'll, we'll go ahead. <laughs> this is going to get John. I'll see if John is watching. <laughs> this is going to get John good. <laughs> see if he's watching. I don't know. You see it, John? I'm soldering on the end of that fuse. <laughs> Woo, that's bad, eh? <laughs> if you're quick, you can do it. Hold him here. All right, let's see. shape. Okay. All right. Now, to irritate John again, I'm soldering to the fuse. Notice I'm heating the iron up very hot. Get on. Get off. Okay, completely okay. Nothing wrong with doing that at all. Nothing wrong with doing that at all. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Of course you would not do that for NASA. But for an old radio, you can do things like that. Well, that was pretty good. Move. Oh, the duck. All right. Okay, now I need a tie wrap. there. It ain't going to pull out of there. Okie doke. Yeah, it's not a bad looking little radio. And the uh, only thing you can pick up without a really good antenna is broadcast band. So fooling with the short wave is just not 
it, it's not worthwhile. Oh, I can remember back in the 60s when I was a kid, there were literally hundreds of shortwave stations. You, you could turn that shortwave radio on. I had an old Zenith, and just every dial mark had some kind of thing on it. It was so fascinating when I was a little kid. It was so fascinating to hear all those different stations, what, three quarters of them in foreign languages. Very, very uh, interesting to a little kid. But uh, now it's uh, it, everybody communicates by the internet. You, you don't need to fool with the expensive broadcast stations. Uh oh. Where's that? Okay, I got knobs, and I got bezels. Okay. Okay, there's some little nails. Little nails. Pokes and holes. That's going to go right on there, and I need little bitty skewers. Now these little bitty skewers here are for that. Okay, I need two more. Bitty 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 skewers. Okay, now those holes have to be large enough for those screws to go through. Good enough. Now here, okay, I gotta I gotta polish that up a little bit. It's a little bit dirty looking. Hell yeah, that doesn't look too bad. I gotta get more of those screws though. This definitely has to be worked on. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it with a piece of um, a, a piece of uh, fine steel wool, and I'm going to buff that up, and then I'm going to spray it with lacquer, and that'll make it nice and gorgeous. Okay, okay. We're just going to take some steel wool, and we're going to buff this thing up. Get the uh, corroded part off. I don't know why the guy would do all the work he did on the cabinet and not do the do the diet the uh, bezel. Definitely detracted from the looks of the radio. Okay. Okay, see how that is? Okay, now to to put it give it the right coloring, I'm gonna use Jacobean stain. Alright. This is just plain old cheap Jacobean stain. The stuff you get minwax from the hardware store. And I've just got a little piece of rag and I'm just gonna wipe that stain onto here.
Okay. See how gorgeous that is? Like that. Okay, now I'm going to take it out and put it in the sun to, to dry. And then we'll coat it with urethane lacquer to finish it. Alright, it's sat in the sun for two hours. And we'll go ahead and uh, spray it with lacquer. Okay, and there we go. Back out in the sun again. <clears throat> All right, here's our our new uh, bezel. Look how pretty that. It, see how it looks kind of golden. That got rid of that ugly old uh, brown look that it had. Oh, okay, we just take this and put it back on. Okay, that is kind of ugly looking. I'm going to go and buff this up and put a little um, lacquer on it to uh, make it look better. Okay? That looked nice. Alrighty. Get here and I got these little bitty nails. Okay, there it is. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, let's turn it on. Oh, wait a minute. I still have to put... Okay, we're going to put an antenna into it. And, um, okay, I'm just going to take that. It, it, it's a toad stabber, a, a sharp point. Cats. I got two cats here today. One of them is the neighbor's cat. Comes to visit. The other's my kitty. It's dead. Saves nearly a thousand dollars a year. But yes, Covido Gonzalez. Hey, wouldn't it be great to have lower emissions? But they don't think about well, what is the cost of that? In what are the costs to human life? They're almost incalculable. So the EPA. All right, I'm gonna get a piece of wire and we'll see how much we have to have on it because I have to be able to. I can't give my antenna here. I got to give them something they can have. All right, this is about ten feet. On the 22 wire. Which we're just beginning to see because we've only reduced fossil fuels a little bit compared to what we have by working on the forum and all these, these other people. So, one is this emergency mindset is really bad, and, and it, it's not justified. We're safer than ever from flying. CO2 emissions have a warming impact and a grading impact. It's not a catastrophic <laughs> The race, 33 year old Benton Buck. Okay, that's it. Beautiful radio.